All right. Well, I think we're all set with the individuals that are going to be participating today. So on behalf of Mass Capital and Starwood Capital, the two principals that are developing this very, very special property in Miami Beach, uh, the first and only new project that has come to market, uh, we're very excited to have with us today uh, the most important part, people that make this beautiful property even more beautiful, uh, Tara Bernard who is the owner and principal and partner of Tara Bernard and Partners, better known as TB&P. Um, and then, of course, as I was mentioning, the Director of Interior Architecture and Design, Tommy Jimnander. Uh, thank you both for joining us today. This is exciting. Uh, this is the first webinar that we've done with you. We look forward to seeing you both here in Miami and Miami Beach to participate in something a little more personalized. But nonetheless, welcome to the world that we live in. And uh, the great thing about it is we are, as everybody knows, on the sand in Miami Beach at 5333 Collins Avenue. But the wonderful thing that makes us very special and very different is the fact that there is nothing, of course, on our east side. But on our west side, we have total unobstructed views to the bay, the ocean, Indian Creek Waterway, of course, Lagorce Country Club and downtown Miami, which... Beautiful daytime, uh, sun, sunrise and sunsets gives this building probably one of the most spectacular positions in all of Miami Beach. So what I'd like to do now is to take us over to our very special partners uh, from TBMP, Tara, uh, Tommy, if you'd be so kind is to introduce Tara Bernard and Partners. Well, thank you, Philip. Lovely to see you and meet everyone else today. I am loving your backdrop. I'm afraid uh, we're sparing you the British weather, but we have a nice arty set up in my office in London. So great to meet everybody. We've been asked a lot what made this project so special for us and our early inspirations. So I think this moment, Philip, really can't go uh, aside without mentioning, of course, the location which you've described. And... Uh, Knowing Miami very well, having spent a lot of time there in my youth, but that's for a different webinar. Um, I think the location on Miami Beach is just fantastic. Um, we can't let the moment pass without talking about ownership because they are the people behind the vision, choosing us, allowing us the freedom of the design, but also with such a strong and keen eye for what's best for the project. And with that, of course, comes OMA Architecture. So with such a combination of talent, talent and vision, the whole project was, of course, incredibly exciting to be awarded here at our office in the studio. We're absolutely thrilled about it. Um, for us, when we approach anything, it is with a true um, belief in what is appropriate, what is indigenous to where we are, what is correct for the architecture and the purchaser, the client. It's really key to us that we create the DNA. But before I dive into with Tommy describing our vision, if you like, for the project, we felt it might be a nice opportunity to share just a little bit about what we get up to. And I know there's someone sitting there very kindly behind the screens who is about to share screen and show you all uh, a very small presentation that's been put together for you. Um, I say small because you know, our portfolio of work, you know, branches so many areas. We work as a practice with HQ in London and Miami. Um, sorry, with Miami work all coming out of the London head office. We have projects all over the world. So international, global indeed. We felt we would dip into the portfolio and share with you something old, something just launched, something coming, something new to give you a taste of what we get up to. And of course, something local. Um, if we go to the next page, we've just completed. So I was in Los Angeles in July. We've had the great honor and it's been thrilling to work with Frank Geary. We were part of this project from literally ground up and it is a 304 bedroom hotel, but with spa, two restaurants, two bars, et cetera, swimming pools. And we're very well known for our work in the hotel sector. It is a Conrad LA. And I will take you quite quickly, because I know we've got to keep a pace um, through some of these images. So if we go to the next image, please, 
we have a little dip into a part of the lobby. The images are very hard to get across the scale and the vistas. But what is relevant about sharing with you today is you might say, well, hey, why did they choose this British girl from all the way over there to come and do a project like this? Our understanding of luxury, layering, and where this translates into Miami is the meandering, the different vistas within the architecture. And really important once we create the flow of space is the layering, the choice of wall materials, tiles on columns in this instance, and the different furniture. If we click forward, I'm going to give you a little taste of one of the restaurants with my dear friend Jose Andreas doing both restaurants, which is super. What a fabulous host of characters we did work with there. And if we click forward, or oh, I'll get into trouble with Philip, we <laughs> take a look at the bar. In the bar, we start to see other things that you might want to sort of take in your mind and realize that we're going to be doing at the Paragon. We're seeing the focus not only on furniture, but look at the ceilings, look at the folds, the sculptured staggering of the ceiling. There's wall finishes. There's screening, the attention to detail on bar, even the bar tops, the furniture, the floor, the layering of rugs. And all of these things are what we put together with this one with a far more LA downtown attitude. If we go to the next page, because otherwise we'll be here all day, I'll give you a quick glimpse of outside and we'll race on to the next image. And you start to see the outdoors. And again, from Los Angeles to Miami, it still counts that indoor to outdoor language, that relationship of how you intermingle and they breathe and live together. If we could go forward, please, one page. And we've left LA, for those that don't know that coastline. Um, we are in uh, Mexico on Playa de Carmen, where we have been appointed by another very very substantial brand and working with Bernard Arnault at Belmont. Belmont property, the Maroma, has been there many, many years, and we were appointed to refurbish and redesign the entire resort. I won't go into every detail, but uh, this opens in April next year. And let's put it like this. If someone buys at the Paragon, we'll get them there. <laughs> uh, I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Here we see an impression of the arrival at this resort. Uh, and arriving at the resort is being welcome. And then when you welcome guests to your home, you need to remember two things. You need to remember where you are, and you need to remember who you are. Where you are here is on, on the line between the jungle and the ocean. And I think you can see in the very center, you actually already see the ocean. Who you are uh, is so important when you're designing these kind of spaces. We need to be very mindful of the heritage the culture, the history, the people, and most of all, the lifestyle. How do people live in these places? And uh, we hope and uh, there is a sense of that in this design. Through the images, which we can, again, just go quite rapidly through. So please, um, they'll give you a taste of bedroom finishes. We can keep moving on. And we start to see uh, a luxury that's relevant to the Mayan coastline, but much more important is our understanding of the luxury of hotels. Here we see the spa, which is a Guerlain spa. And all of these luxurious elements, by being appointed for this project on Miami Beach, to work at the Paragon, we are bringing in all of that very high-end luxury living, that sophistication that we see in hotels, but we can bring into residential. And that has been a very key part of our journey for the Paragon. If we click forward, we arrive at a very moody shot, indeed, of um, our hotel project um, in Fort Lauderdale, the Four Seasons Hotel. Um, I think with this one, I'd actually prefer that you just got down there. And if you go to the next page, I genuinely recommend a drink. You can have a coffee or you can have an aperitivo at Honey Fits. And, and I can tell you, I've been up there to Evelyn's. Delicious, but divine, divine furniture. Really comfortable. Yeah. Well, Form followed function for sure. The hotel in itself was wonderful to do. There was a, a completely different DNA, and I think that's very relevant. So I've called it local, but Fort Lauderdale has a completely different attitude and style. So what we are doing on Miami Beach will be very different. But 
it still has that nod to a very strong flooring, not forgetting anything from the ceiling treatments to our attention to detail with the tongue and groove and the varnished wood on the walls. And those are elements that might not look the same, but their values, if you like, the values and the philosophies of what we pour into our projects remain absolutely um, in the same vein for the Paragon. If we move on, we start to get a glimpse of hotel rooms and the vistas out that connection to the sea, and of course the spa. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, and we go to the next page, we should arrive back home with Philip. And over to you. I hope that gives you all a little feel of what we do. I mean, there's so much more, but um, I think today is mostly about the fact that we were thrilled to be asked to join you today and to have a play and a role in this project. And thank you. Uh, quite the history. Uh, for those of you that have not looked into TBMP, I can tell you that the history of what Tara has brought to her company is just spectacular. Um, it's something to be very excited to be participating with them uh, in this beautiful project, the Paragon. Um, but I think we can all see from everything that the attention to detail is something that the company and the partners and most importantly, Tara and Tommy definitely know what our buyers are looking for. So if we would look at that arrival um, of our building and the amenity of the lobby experience, which I like to call our foyer, um, tell us a little bit about your thought on what came to be to create this opportunity of the lifestyle. Well, I think when you look at anything like this, there's so many different components. One is the consideration of the space itself, the architecture, which we'll dive into in a minute through another image. But if we hold here for a moment, I think also we weave into every decision. We also have an understanding, and I really believe we do consider and appreciate the value of the purchasers or the clients for this. We know that we're able, because of the space that we have, in not only the arrival and the lobby, but the amenities in itself to start to bring something that is aspirational, but seductive, yet also can have something that is a residential, something that has a home from home within all the areas that we start to spill into. And the next page um, should take us in to the arrival. And Tommy, I don't know if you would like to pick up on that. Yes, here we have the arrival and that's the arrival to your home, but it's also the arrival to the great extension of the home that all, all these amenities. And to make sense of all of that uh, amount of experience, we think it's very important to work with flow so that it always feels seamless to use these spaces. So that's the first we look at, how do we navigate? And the second thing we do, we look, we call it sculpting. It's looking at the volume. We know OMA has created a very grand space and we add to that to bring in other aspects like intimacy. We can see in this uh, image that we have dropped lights. We have the louvers on the left, we have greenery. Uh, and then after the sculpting, which is the main forming of the space, we add the textures and the shapes. So that is looking at furniture, uh, that is shapes, and also uh, helps you navigate. And then finally, all the finishes and the texture that sits in the fabrics and in the materials on the walls and all other surfaces. And then maybe we go to the breakfast room. Here, we have come a little bit further into the our amenities, and we have this dedicated space for a morning experience, and we start to see the link down to the ocean, which of course is incredible. And when we jump into this page, we have created a room off the main Sunset Lounge, and in a sense, it's our wine club room. And here we see a change in the flooring. Throughout the project, we are using a lot of marvelous stones for the floors. They all have some kind of movement or tonality in them that creates contrast and, in a sense, patterned, not overly patterned. We've used wood throughout, a blonde wood, I would describe it as, but highly, highly varnished. And then here we can get somewhat moodier, but let's not forget we're in Miami. So I have, we're constantly aware that that sort of old school 
European or British club, we can definitely bring a play onto it with the wine, with the dark green, sumptuous velvet, that British racing green with its wonderful white piping, fantastic furniture, the sculpture, the shape of it, all blending into something that has a residential feel, something sumptuous for the guests, somewhere they can go to beyond their apartments, although I don't know if I'd want to leave my apartment, and um, and built-in units for the wine, dedicated. Aren't yes, and while we're so excited about talking about uh, the look and feel of all of this, we also need to bear in mind all the offerings. Because here we see, at the, we, in the backdrop, we see uh, the wine cabinets uh, that can have uh, be offered to, to the owners. And also in the center, a sommelier station, and you can have sort of uh, a sommelier experience in this space. Uh, just as in the previous, the, the breakfast room, uh, there would be a barista service and, and a breakfast serving, of course. Yeah, I think that's a really good point you make, because operationally, we're so into the design, but everything about this is that of a top quality hotel. I mean, the very fact that you can go home and you don't just benefit from a marvellous concierge, but there are all these different areas being serviced, all in mind that it is dedicated only to the owners of the apartments, which is quite something. That's an important piece, because I think when we talk about everything from what we're looking at now, our Sunrise Lounge, um, all the way to the Sunset Lounge and everything in between, these are just residential amenities for our homeowners that nobody else is going to come in to use. This is a private community of 73 residences, of 73 families that are going to truthfully enjoy the space. So I, I'm excited because uh, these renderings are really telling a beautiful story. So I'm going to quiet down for a moment. I'm going to let you two continue. I think this room is, in the, you know, in the most humble way, it is just the hardest one to capture on a rendering because there's so much to it in terms of its shape and the textures. So we have quite a lot going on. I'm going to describe this as the most sort of home-like place. The flooring, which is hard maybe to see off the rendering, but it's very important. This is an incredible seagrass, which is very elegant, very understated. It's a understated effortless sheet that we use here, mixed with this blonde varnish wood, but all in this very ribbed way. And in each pocket, which is hard to see right at the back of the room, you see these little bonquette seating areas, all with a linen wrap around the walls. The furniture, again, sits around, staggered around the room, salt and pepper, so there's a whole variation of flavors in terms of the different furniture, the styles, some with wood, some with rattan. The fabric's very Mediterranean, very fresh, effortlessly thrown together with the cushions. We've got planting going on in there. And again, a dedicated bar with this marvelous fluted finish on the base, great slabs of stone and a fantastic area to mingle and to have a drink or maybe a quick espresso before you get going for your day. This will change between night and day considerably and opens up onto the most tremendous terrace. The terrace is just on the right and overlooks the pool and the ocean. Yeah. Next is a, a more snug, and snug is a very sort of English word, but it's, and it's very important with these great and rather grand spaces that we have different areas we can choose that we might personally want to. And here we have the pool table, library walls, fantastic screen, big sofa sitting around it, marvelous, strong, dynamic rugs. And again, always looking at the floor to ceiling, the scale, this woodwork, this millwork coming in, the libraries, the niches for art or the TV in this particular instance. It, it's a dedicated, I don't know if I'd call it games room. It might be someone else's living room, but it's it has a very uh, strong, warm feeling. It works in the day. This is more of an evening rendering. And um, it's just off our Sunset Lounge. So you really start and it bleeds into this marvelous where we were earlier, um, kind of clubby wine cellar room. So everything speaks to each other. Here we're going upstairs uh, where we have the spa areas. You can see we have a lighter mood. We have a uh, textured stone uh, on the walls and we have uh, a, a patterned stone on the floor and we have great vistas onto the ocean and back at the room, you can see uh, seats behind these lounges, 
that goes into uh, the pool area. What's very interesting and what I'm seeing, obviously I've seen it more firsthand, but as our guests are seeing today, the fluting, the texturing, the continuity of inside and outside, as you said, of OMA's design of the building, and now what you're creating with regards to the positioning of both the amenities, and then as we'll get into the residences. Um, for our guests that are in, if you happen to see something that brings an idea and a question for you, please send the question through, and we'll be discussing those at the end of our, our webinar this, after, this morning. Um, but I'm going to let you both continue on. So thank you once again. I think uh, we sit here and we obviously look at a glimpse of the, um, within the spa. And as you were talking about, it's as, and Philip just rightly jumped into every surface that we're looking at is given thought and consideration, how it sits within the greater design, how it features, and then the texture and the tonality that we can bring into the layers and the finishes. We go to the next page. Well, the gym today is essential. Um, they're no longer tucked away in basements and, you know, good luck to you if you try. Um, and certainly with the purchases that we know and we very familiar with the type of, you know, with the people that we believe will be buying, anyone today is looking for health and fitness in their lifestyle. And the, the better the space, the better the enjoyment of health and fitness. And I think this CGI, or sorry, rendering just speaks to the amount of space, the consideration of the design. So it's still beautifully finished with the wood coming up now and the flooring. We have it onto the walls, three quarters of the way up, the polished plaster. And you can still see with the uh, reflected ceiling how we're still bringing in that movement and working very much on the best layout for all the equipment. This rendering, I think, also shows a bit of OMA's genius in having all the, if you see the window on the right-hand side is angled at 45 degrees, and that's something that gives actually all the units in this building a, a perfect uh, view onto the ocean, which is very rare in developments like this. Yeah. I, in fact, on that note, I have to completely agree, and it was a big draw to us to see the, their work. I mean, it's absolutely stunning and stands out on Miami Beach quite considerably. And with today's world changing, they also created so this way you can actually have these sliding glass doors opened up. So you have the, the breeze from the ocean coming into the gym and the spa fit and fitness center uh, to truthfully enjoy the breeze and have natural air. Absolutely. Ah, uh, we're home. <laughs> <laughs> someone's left and someone's ringing us. <laughs> 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 well, there you go. We're home. Um, the, the apartments themselves are just magnificent, arranging in size, I think, from 2,000 square foot or 200 square meters up to over 600, nearly 700. Um, someone's calling me. Sorry, I'm just going to turn that off. Forgive me. Um, and we have the most exceptional volume of space. And within that, we start to see a rendering that looks at furniture, um, which is going to be so subjective to each client, each purchaser. Um, but we see there a slight glimpse into possibly the kitchen, which we should go to, to the next slide. And it's here where we have obviously many different configurations in terms of the layouts of each unit. We will see different shapes coming in to the kitchens. but Predominantly, we have combined a use of stone, bringing in wood, and here we see a marvelous example of one with an island. You've seen us use the fluting before. We don't want the apartments to be alien to what we've seen in our whole um, downstairs and the amenities, so we're bringing in that fluted, again, just a touch of it to the base of the island, scale in terms of the stone and the wood. Do you want to add anything on the kitchen? No, I want to pick up on the word you use scale. I think that's very important here. The kitchens are large. And as you can see, the counter, uh, the stone counter in the niche has a, a bigger volume, a bigger thickness is articulated. And also we're using the stone on the um, extraction hood, which just gives that feeling of solidity. 
uh, whilst the the island has the fluted stone and a much more uh, fluid and decorative feel. Yeah, and I actually we keep <laughs> reminding me of things. As you look at that, you've got the plant on one side, which is obviously we're elected to put in here, but on the right, you start to see the wood and how it curves. And it's all those subtle curves. And then just within the curve, we've taken away and opened up a few shelves. And those are the elements that just start to give it an organic feel. So we're not overly organic, but it's got this marvelous softness within such a contemporary design. Well, talking about softness is now this opportunity where you really recommended and I'll say pushed our, de our developers to give our buyers two choices of the light oak or this being the walnut. Yeah, um, and uh, uh, I will, uh, maybe we'll ask everyone a question at the end with uh, the preferences. Um, it's, it's very important. We're over 70 units and people today, you know, we learn so much from everyone and there is so much choice out there that we, we felt that with over the 70 units, it was important to have at least two different fields um, to differentiate. We like both. It's very hard. One stage, um, let's say, much more natural, much, uh, it's fresh. This one takes a richer, um, more, I don't want to say traditional, it's just a richer, moodier feel. Both work. You know, it's like chocolate. Which one do you prefer? <laughs> I'm a milk chocolate person, personally. So. I'm a dark chocolate girl. <laughs> That's, and, and why not? <laughs> but it's interesting because actually it doesn't always work to just it's not just flick one in and flick one out I mean when we were doing this I think there must have been over I don't know we must have had over 30 different woods for each color tone so it wasn't just like well let's make one light one dark one really speaks to that blonde feeling of downstairs and goes very natural organic feel this is subtly just a volume up a little bit richer the tones working um and it was uh, it was with great consideration that these two came up. The one other thing that I find also very interesting, and again, I like to tout our developers, but I certainly want to you know congratulate you because one of the things you got them to do is to create almost a custom home for each one of our buyers because not only do they get to choose kitchens as we've just seen, but I don't know if our guests have looked at the flooring modifications as well in these renderings because we go from the wide plank wood to now a stone option or even a porcelain option as a tile. So you've really kind of molded our developer into creating something as individualized for our 73 families. Well, we uh, absolutely um, felt that it was essential to have the option of wood flooring throughout. And again, with the wood flooring, our our narrative was very much to go with the wider wood floorboard. So wide planks, you've got, as we were just discussing, the scale. So you really want to have generous wide wood floor planks. I think they bring a, uh, an impact, a sophistication to it. But equally, we're in a wonderfully warm climate. So introducing stone flooring, which also brings something. Yes, and porcelain as an option. That just it gives a different feeling underfoot. Definitely. Chanel, if you can continue, please. The bedrooms do everything you would wish for, from the master bedrooms, the marvelous walk-in wardrobes, the, the bathrooms that everyone will benefit from. And it's in this instance that it is all about the scale, the views, the language between indoor and outdoor. Um, we have in this image, which I think is relevant. We see the wood flooring, the wide wood floors, and it's about layering. So of course, which rug you choose to throw down, what bed, which bench at the end of the bed, what throw are you going to put on it, the chairs in the corner, the bedside, the lamps, the shade detail, all of these things will bring more and more to it. But I think in themselves, they're very elegant. And I think for us, yes, it was all about luxury. But what we love about doing the Paragon, it is slightly just understated. It's not over the top. We're not trying to do shiny surfaces. We want to do something that shows the sophistication of a traveler, of someone who's arrived now to make a home on Miami, Miami Beach. And therefore, every 
material and tone, every consideration to each room and there, the movement of the ceiling, working with OMA all the time has all been, in a sense, melded together. And a great attention to facilities. Uh, we don't see it in this rendering, but the master suites all have midnight bars, which we think is just a great luxury to have. To have uh, that refrigeration at hand at night is very comfortable. Yeah, good point. And um, now the other thing that you know, and you talked about rooms. Well, with inside and outside living in South Florida, our terraces become extensions of our living rooms and our living space. Um, and you've chosen and worked with the developers to create a very nice component of duality of inside outside flooring, um, which really is interesting because we will finish the flooring again for all of our buyers internally and externally. So there's continuity for the building for the look, but most importantly for the residents inside. So, the, you know, again, the duality of internal and external space really is really exciting. Ah. Well, there you go. We landed on a great shot. But um, at this point, I find uh, looking indoors, uh, we put a lot of love and care into the bathrooms. And um, it's all about the stone, but with just a little subtle element of that wood coming in just under the vanity. So we soften it. You'll also see a little bit of the fluting, but slightly wider ribbed fluting on the, on the bathtub itself. The his and hers side of things the generosity not only of space, but also the scale of the stone itself and the choice of all the fixtures and finishing, the mirrors and the lighting. Do you want to add? Yeah, the, the layering of, of, of textures and finishes. We can see the timber sitting underneath uh, the thick stone vanity, the slight ribbing of the stone on the bath front. It all just adds uh, to give a very sort of warm feel to what actually is a marble bathroom uh, and uh, where so maybe just the stone feels more cool rather than cold. I think that's a great point because a lot of people think sometimes that too much stone is too cold. But I think to your point, Tommy, that's exactly what you know we're seeing here is there is a warmth to it. It's not a cold you know, monolith of, of stone. It's really comfortable. It's a, a beautiful stone and the stones that we're selecting have a warmth to them. And there are um, older stones, if you like, there's more blue or real, real pure white that we've moved away. It, it has a warmth to it for sure. And also the way that we have created, you can see the niches that curve where we have our vanity. And again, the shadowing and the lighting create warmth. In addition to that, the wood and the use of it coming in creates warmth. The texture, so the shaping and the sculpturing of elements in the bathroom create movement and thus warmth. And ultimately, you know, we do learn from the past. You know, we, we can't help but look at some of the great design. And some of the most traditional bathrooms have used so, such um, an extensive marble. And to throw it away to try and find something more on trend or you know, more playful. We felt that we could still keep with something like a marble in a very contemporary war manner. And uh, I think the bathrooms on this project will just be, um, I hope, a delight for all the people using them. <laughs> and the interesting thing for our guests joining us that maybe don't know, our terraces are 10 feet deep. So to give the scale of how large and wonderful the space is, both again, inside and outside, this is a 10 foot deep terrace and it shows you how far into the, the bathroom you go with space so that you're really enjoying the open air that, you know, South Florida living. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever been to Little Palm Island down here in the on the Florida Keys, but this is that feel, it's that indoor out there bathroom. It's the bathroom to have the natural breeze um, it's very special. It's very exciting. So I can't wait to see it in 2025. Well, Philip, I think what you just said describes it. And the other side of, especially the ocean front, one of the things that always strikes me when I'm there, which is often back in January, cannot wait, is that the evening, the night, and how quiet it goes and how dark it goes. And that we've also given thought to. So when you do close in the evening, that bathroom will be a glowing marble gem. And it will, at that point, have all the warmth that you want because the ocean does go so pitch black. 
And I think what we've really tried to do is understand not only the connection to outdoors, but your glowing home inside come the evening. And that brings me to the point of how OMA did the creation of the structure. If we look in the, the rendering behind me, you know, you, every unit, every residence has that view to the ocean, but also has the view to the bay. So yeah. as you're mentioning about the darkness of the evening, you now also get the glimmer of this of the downtown skyline in addition. Exactly. No what Just amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Very exciting. Very, very exciting. Chanel, if we can continue on. Well, there we go. There we go. <laughs> we, we did quite well. <laughs> you know, it's this has been this is wonderful. This is very exciting. You know, we are fitting right within our timelines because we wanted to make sure we have the ability to reach out and have our guests uh, coordinate everything, uh, which is very exciting. Um, the important thing that I think is extremely interesting here is. Not only are we selling these beautiful residences, um, we're selling them very well. Very proud to say the sales team who's online with us from Pietro Belmonte and Annie De La Rosa, Camila Cuevas, and Diana. And I, I always, uh, Diana, I'm going to use your married name, Judge, because I can always make a mistake, so you'll excuse me. Um, we're, we're a great synergistic team with tremendous opportunity with you know, TBMP to create the synergy of this spectacular building. Um, I think it's very important that everybody knows that our concierge services for our buyers, we are actually going to be signing our contracts with our concierge team to be able to now from day one that they go to contract, not when they go to closing, start to give concierge service to our buyers. So there's so many different things that we are going to be able to do and create the lifestyle um, I think, Tara, Tommy, you have really hit it spot on for what the people are expecting to see here in Miami Beach. Um, what I'd love like to do right now is to open it up to some questions that some of our guests may have that maybe have been to the property, have seen uh, the presentation before. So do we have anybody that would like to bring up? Because I've seen one. And that's from Ron. Um, and I want to thank you for offering this, answering this question. You, we talked about the restaurant, which is at the Sands Edge at the ocean front, as well as the speakeasy. Um, Tara, Tommy, can you just give us a quick snippet of information of what you're designing with the restaurant for our private owners? Uh, not open to the public, I might add. Well, um, I think the... Um... The clubhouse or the the restaurant and the speakeasy have just been an absolute sort of joy to look at we have again very much that indoor outdoor relationship to the most fresh cool restaurant which has got such element of home still so we've built these beautiful wraparound banquettes the fabrics of that sort of effortless medicine Iranian breezy fabrics, but also real attention to not only the flooring, the ceiling, and then also the bar there, which will be very special. Yeah, we see the restaurant terrace on the low image lower right, uh, sitting looking across the pool towards the ocean. Uh, and on the image above, we are looking across the pool back to the restaurant, and you see it in the background there. And that has a lighter, I would say, more breezy feel. Yeah. Uh, and then when we walk upstairs, which you do through a staircase just on the right, on the upper right image, you can see there is a terrace. And behind there, we have a private dining room and we have a speakeasy, which has a much more, let's call it moody and playful vibe. Yeah. The speakeasy has, speakeasy has allowed us to really explore just the most sumptuous fabrics. Think everything about a layered velvet, sexy club. And what we have done there is gone for it. And we have got uh, such a change. It will feel like such a private hideaway. The most tremendous bar, the backdrop to that bar is just gonna be enticing you'll want to stay you'll definitely want that second martini if you're there in the evening and there's a lot of very sexy seating around it plus a private dining room but more to come on that 
Beautiful. Uh, Melissa, thank you for your question. Um, the next one comes uh, with the idea of our private beach club. Uh, in South Florida, in all of Florida, actually, there's no private beaches. It's all public. So what our developers have done is they've created this private beach club within our community, up at the top of the dune. Um, and you're creating also then that outdoor furniture feel of how this is going to be the lifestyle again of their private beach club, which will have service from the restaurant and from the speakeasy, from the lounge. Um, what are your thoughts and what is your feeling about how the the beach club connects to the cabanas, which connects to the speakeasy, the restaurant chairs and the dining? Is there continuity or is each area created individually? And Melissa, thank you for that very thoughtful question. I think it's simple to say that everything in terms of the outdoors from the terraces that spill out on the Sunset Lounge to what sits around the pool and what walks down to the beach club will all speak to each other. We're not trying to create zoned or themed areas per different aspects of the property. So they might not be exactly the same, but they will speak of the same language. I would say gradual differentiation from being close to the 